If you want to know how to make your own Minecraft server in 1.18.1, this is the video for you. Welcome to the breakdown. We're going to jump right into it. However, I do want to mention that this is not a 24-hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. On top of that, it's only meant for your friends, your family, people that you can trust. That's the only people who should be joining this server because it's hosted on your own public IP address. On top of that, it's hosted on your own computer as well, and that means it's going to be using your own computer's hardware, and you're going to need a decently new and decent computer overall in order to run Minecraft and a Minecraft server at the same time, right? Because if you're hosting this on the computer you're playing Minecraft on, you need to be able to run Minecraft and run a Minecraft server, and both are relatively resource intensive, especially in 1.18, where performance has been degraded a bit more in comparison to previous versions. Nevertheless, though, what if you do want a public server? What if you do want a server that is, you know, you don't have to worry about hardware or security or anything like that? It's all taken care of. You don't have to worry about, honestly, anything except creating the server and playing on it. Well, in that case, you want to use our sponsor, Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash apex to start your very own server where you can have a public server or a private server it doesn't matter it's meant to do either very very simple to make it public if you don't want it to be private on top of that it's hosted on apex's hardware meaning if you don't have a good computer that's okay as long as you can play on another minecraft server like hypixel or something like that you can play on a server at apex minecraft hosting and then last but not least you don't have to worry about security at all apex keeps things up to date and extremely secure recently there was an issue with security on all minecraft servers and apex had it fixed within an hour of it coming out absolutely incredible. Apex is truly amazing. We use them for our own servers, playoutbreakdowncraft.com, as well as private servers. We truly put our money where our mouth is with Apex Minecraft hosting. We love them, and you can check them out again at the first link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex to help support what we do here and get yourself an awesome Minecraft server. Nevertheless, though, what if you do want to make a server without Apex Minecraft hosting? You're okay with hosting it on your computer, and it's only going to be for your friends and family. You're also okay with, you know, keeping it updated and all that stuff. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and get to work on our server. The first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below. That's going to take you here. This is our in-depth guide on how to make a Minecraft server. It goes over everything in a text format. We know some people like that more, but nevertheless, once you're here, go ahead and click on this green Download Minecraft button, and it's actually going to take you to the server Minecraft download page. Once you're here, you want to click on the Minecraft underscore server 1.18.1.jar button right here, this little link, Download Minecraft Server. When you click on that in the bottom left, it's going to download the server.jar, right like so. Now we go ahead and minimize our browser. On our desktop, we want to go ahead and right click and create a new folder. You can title this whatever you want, but I'm going to title it play.breakdowncraft.com because that's our incredible 1.18 survival and skyblock server. Come play with this. You will absolutely love it. Nevertheless, once you've got your folder created, we need to get that file we downloaded into it. This is going to be most likely found in your downloads folder. In the top left of my screen, you're going to see a little Windows icon. That little Windows icon is probably going to be in the bottom of your screen or if you're on Windows 11. In the center of your screen, go ahead and click on that Windows icon and then type in downloads of this downloads file folder here. Open it up and in here you will have a server.jar. You can drag this to your desktop or just drag it straight into that folder we created because that's where it needs to end up. Once you've got the server.jar in the folder we created here, you'll probably notice a few things. One, yours may not be a .jar file. That's okay. If it's not, just click on view and then click on the file name extensions button. See, the .jar disappears whenever I click that. So click on file name extensions to make that appear. Two, you may have a different logo here than what I have. You might not have this like Java coffee cup logo. If that's the case, you're going to need to download Java. And actually, most people watching this video will need to download Java. That is because Minecraft updated to Java 17 very recently, and it is basically required in order to run the server.jar. It's actually not basically, it is required to run the server.jar. You'll need Java 17. Luckily, in the description down below, we have this in-depth guide on how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. We have our Java 17 server tutorial, or Java 17 download tutorial right here in video format, as well as text format. Choose whichever one you want. It goes over everything, and it's going to give you the latest version of Java 17, meaning any security issues, which is something that is actually a reason to update to 1.18.1, by the way, any security issues that are apparent in Java will be fixed if you download this version of Java here. So so go through that. Make sure you get that. It's very, very important. At that point, you should be good to go. But if you're still having issues here in a second, you need to run the jar fix. So if you open up this file that we're about to open and it's still not working, you need to run the jar fix and then you'll be good to go. Nevertheless, we can now come back here. And like I said, run this file. Double click on the server.jar. And when we do, it's actually going to act like it's loading, but then it's not going to do anything. It's going to kind of fail. And what I mean by that is it's going to load some stuff up here, as you can see. We've got library logs, versions, ELA.txt, server.properties. We've got a few files, but uh, nothing else popped up, right? The server console didn't pop up. We can't see like a world loading. 
none of that's happened. That's because we need to agree to the EULA.txt file here. With that being said though, if you do have issues with these files generating, like you double click on the server.jar and nothing happens, that's because you need to go run that jar fix that we just mentioned. Nevertheless though, let's go ahead and open up the EULA.txt file here in Notepad. Once we've got this open, we want to go ahead and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E exactly like that, and that is assuming you agree to this EULA here, which we do. Let's go ahead and click File, Save, right like so. EULA equals true is there, so we're good to go. We can close out of that, and now when we double click on that server.jar, it's going to automatically open up and be working. I do want to mention while this is opening up that there is a security exploit with Minecraft 1.18 and lower server versions. We have an in-depth guide on fixing that which is linked in the description down below if you are running an older server version but it is something I wanted to mention here in our main tutorial. This server, Minecraft 1.18, is fixed. So you don't have to worry about it. If you are running a 1.18 server, you're good to go. Also, if you update your server from 1.18 to 1.18.1, you are good to go. The bug is fixed and you don't have to worry about it. But if you are running a version of Minecraft 1.18 or older on your server, you do need to do a special security fix to fix that. We have a dedicated tutorial, which again, you can find in the description as well as the eye at the top of your screen. Nevertheless, our server is now open. As you can see, done at the bottom down here means the server is up and running. We can actually go ahead and join it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.18.1. And then once we are in game, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to join this server. So nothing special here. I'm gonna do open up Minecraft 1.18.1. I will see you after a quick jump cut. So everyone, I felt like my camera's a little too large here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that a little smaller. Don't wanna break immersion and randomly have it jump there. So I did it live. So anyway, now we have the Minecraft, uh, as you can see, server open here. We also have 1.18.1 Java edition open. We can then click on multiplayer and then we wanna click direct connection. And then you wanna type this right here, actually, local host. Localhost is what you want to type in as your server address. Now, you are the only person that can ever join your server this way. Even if someone's on your safe internet connection, they'll use your IPv4 address to connect to this server, not localhost. So localhost is only for you, but let's go ahead and see if we can join. And by the way, we'll show you how to join using those other methods later in this video. Once we click join server, you'll see on the left-hand side over here, it pops right up. We are joining right on in, and we are now in a Minecraft server. Awesome stuff. Now, one of the things I always like to do is uh, just to show you later on in the video, we are uh, in the same server. So I like to gather a few blocks here and then we'll go ahead and place them on top of this tree because uh, I don't think there's any, any denying... Where'd my other block go? I don't think there's any denying that there normally uh, aren't dirt blocks that spawn on trees. This probably isn't 100% true, but I think, we're, I think we're pretty safe to assume that. So there we go. There is that. And later on in this video, you'll see when we join back into the server, that'll be there. Now, let's go ahead, close out of this server though, and show you how your friends can join it, and that's gonna be using your public IP, and to do that, we're gonna have to port forward. Now, I know a lot of people get scared by that, but we go in depth with this, and we're gonna give you as many resources as we can to make sure your port forward process is very smooth, but somewhere like Apex Minecraft hosting, you don't have to port forward, so if you just hate port forwarding, like, I'm not doing that, you can't go with someone like Apex as an option, but we're gonna show you how to do it in this video. Let's go ahead and close out of Minecraft. We can also, come over here and stop the server. Always stop your server this way, or you could have some issues with being able to restart it. So let's go ahead and type stop, S-T-O-P, right like so, and hit enter. It's gonna close out of the server properly. You're good to go. Now I'm also gonna even close out of this, which is our server directory. And then we wanna click the little was icon. We've already went over this. It's in the top of my screen, bottom left of your screen, and in the center if you're on Windows 11. And then you wanna type in CMD, right like so. And then you'll have the command prompt app here. Open that up. And in command prompt, we wanna type IP, C-O-N-F-I-G, IP config, exactly like this, and hit enter. You're gonna get a bunch of information here, but we only need two strings of numbers. I do recommend opening up Notepad or grabbing a pen and paper on your desk or whatever and writing this down because we do need these numbers later. So let's go ahead and grab them. So the numbers we need are going to be our IPv4 address, right like so, and so IPv4. And by the way, your numbers here are gonna be a completely different number than what mine are, most likely, right? It's most likely gonna be completely different and that's what we're getting in this way. So 192.168.1.67 is what mine is. And as you can see, IPv4 address, there it is. We also need our default gateway, right? So let's go ahead, default gateway and that's going to be the bottom number here however in some cases you may have a default gateway that's both numbers and letters usually under that you will have a default gateway that also is just a string right so basically this will be two lines the first one will have numbers and letters and then under that there'll be kind of like a blank over here and then a string of numbers you want the one that's just a string of numbers and that will be a similar format to what mine is here right so in my case 192.168.1.1 in my case yours may be the same maybe different 
Now that we've got those numbers, we can close out of that. And now at this point, if everyone who's playing on your server is in your house, everyone else will use this number right here. If someone is on the same internet connection as you, you don't have to port forward and they can join your server using the IPv4 address. Otherwise, if anyone is outside of your internet connection, meaning they are literally not on the same physical internet Wi-Fi, you know, router is you, then you will need to port forward. So let's go ahead and do it. To do this, we want to open up a web browser, open up a brand new tab right like this. And then up here at the top, you want to type in the default gateway. In my case, that's 192.168.1.1, right like so, and then hit enter. Then you'll get some sort of a login box, most likely, right? Mine pops in from the top here. You might have a nice login box in the graphical user interface, like a GUI style. Yours may pop in from the bottom or be in the center of your screen, but you'll probably have some sort of a login box. So now, what do you type into this login box? Well, you type in your router username and password. And this is gonna be different from your Wi-Fi password, so keep that in mind. But in the description down below, we have this. This is how to find your router's password. And it goes over every single method that you can use to find your router's password. Start with method one, go all the way down through method five. Most people, by the way, get it by method three. So just keep that in mind. Then once you've got your router's username and password, come back here, enter it in and log in. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'll meet you after a quick jump cut. All right, here we are logged into our router and it's time to port forward. Now, before I go through port forwarding on my specific router, and when I do that, I'm gonna give you a bunch of different terms and where port forward could be found on your router. Something worth watching is this video. This is a complete guide to port forwarding on any router. And the reason we call it on any router is because we go through a ton of different ones. And even if your specific router isn't mentioned in here, we probably showcase a router that's very similar to your router. That's why it's worth watching this. Even if you watch through it, you know, just one time picking up all the different terms and things like that and seeing where it could be on your router. When you log in, you're probably going to be like, oh, this is very similar to this other router that is included in this video. So go through this tutorial here. And then once you've done that, you can come back to your router and you'll be a lot more familiar than you are if you've never logged into it before. Now, port forwarding is usually located in an advanced tab, in a security tab, or in an administration tab. Sometimes it can be in an advanced and then an administration tab or an administration advanced tab. I've also seen it though featured in apps and gaming, as well as NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, or NAT gaming, NAT gaming. Overall though, you're looking for port forwarding or single port forwarding. For example, I had an old router, it was in security, and then it was in apps and gaming, and then it was in single port forwarding, right? So it's three menus deep there to find it, but it was in there, and every router will have this option. For me, it is in advanced, and then I have to log back in because I set idle for too long. One second. There we go. Then it is in advanced again. So advanced, and then advanced again, and then finally it is in port forwarding slash port triggering, right? So three menus deep there for me. For you, it could be more. For some routers, it's right up at the top called Apps and Gaming. You click on it and you can port forward. It really just depends on your router. However, for me, that is how you can get to it. Once you're here though, it's time to go ahead and either add a port forward, right? Add a custom service or add a port forward. Or some of you will just have a big long string of basically, you know, like dialogue boxes. In that case, you want to go ahead and just enter in the first one and then save it. You'll be good to go. So for service or ID name on your port forward, it's always going to be Minecraft. It's just saying, what is this? For your protocol, you're going to select TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. If you can't select both, do your port forward twice, once for TCP and then again for UDP. I have the ability to select both though, so that's what I'm going to do. For external port or anything involving the word ports at all, you're going to enter in 25565. So external port, P-O-R-T, there's the word port, 25565 is the port. For internal port, inside port, anything involved in the word port, 25565, that's what you're going to enter. Now, for your internal IP address or your IPv4 address or your local IP address, anything mentioning an IP in your port forward is going to be your basically IPv4 address that we found earlier. Now, in some cases, you have a drop down box or a list like this where you can select your different, you know, you're a device in that case, or you can just get the IPv4 address we found earlier and enter it in. So my name, mine is 192.168.1.67, right? Like so, right? So that's how you can do that. And you can select this from here as well, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. And if your device isn't listed, mine's not, by the way, that's okay. Just go ahead and enter in the IPv4 address. It will work. Now go ahead and click apply. It's going to save the port forward, right? Like so. And then we'll be good to go. Your port forward is complete, but how do your friends join the server? Well, they will use your public IP address, which you can find in the link in the description down below. What's my IP here? And you can see why it's so important that you only give this to people you trust. You can see your region, your city, your latitude and longitude coordinates all from your IP address here. And that's why, again, it's so important that you only give this out to people you trust. Now, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and copy it right like so. Copy it from here. And then we are going to go ahead and take this and paste it 
in Minecraft. But copy your IP address from here, and now we can open up Minecraft. This is also how your friends are going to join. And by the way, you may not be able to join off your public IP, and if you can't, that's okay. But your friends will always have to join off your public IP, right? Now let's go ahead and, like I said, open up Minecraft and get our server running. Before we do that, though, we actually do need to open up our server directory here, and then open up the server.properties file. Then you want to find server-ip equals here, and you want to enter in that IPv4 address right here next to server-ip equals. So in my case, 192.168. Dot one dot six seven, right like so. Then go ahead and do file, save, and close out of server.properties there. Now though, we can finally go ahead and start the server by double clicking on the server.jar. We can also go ahead and open up Minecraft. So I'm gonna go ahead, let the server start up, open up Minecraft, I'll meet you after a quick jump cut. Here we are, our server is running as well as Minecraft is open. We're gonna click on multiplayer, we're gonna click direct connection, and in this time instead of localhost, we're gonna enter in that IP address we found earlier. But again, you can only see 103 because you don't wanna give this out to anybody and everybody because of the information we were able to show you earlier based on your IP address, right? All that is able to be grabbed from your IP as well as the ability to DDoS you and do a lot of crazy stuff. So that's why it's so important to keep this private. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and click join server here. And when we do, it's going to log us in to our Minecraft server. Now, one thing I will say is it might take a second, there you go, to connect. And we do have a uh, kind of a whited out area over here in the console because, uh, well, it shows the public IP when you join the console as well. So just keep that, or in the console when you join as well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if for whatever reason you're showing this publicly, you would never do that. I don't know why you would. We do it all the time. Anyway, nevertheless, we want to make sure that is wide out. So here we are. We are in our server, and there is our little dirt tower. And you now know how to make a Minecraft server. If you can't join via your public IP address, that's okay. Some ISPs don't allow you to root back to yourself, which is what you're doing by joining off your public IP. Your friends, though, can only join off the public IP, so it's important they can. And if they do have any issues, it's most likely going to be an issue with either Windows Defender or your port forward. Luckily, you can check out Windows Defender in the description down below. We have an in-depth guide on how to fix Windows Defender if it's broken in Minecraft, as well as a guide in the description down below on how to fix broken Minecraft servers. So if you have a broken Minecraft server, right, basically if you have any issues with your server, we have a complete guide in the description down below for Minecraft servers and how to fix them. And that does still work 100% in 1.18. A lot of those issues are common. And uh, yeah, there's so many we can't go through them. That's a 30 minute video in itself. But if you do have any issues, go through that video and it will probably help you out. But nevertheless, that is how you can make a Minecraft server. And by the way, if you can't join via your public IP, just join via local host, right? That's going to work, and your friends can join via the public IP, no problem. Nevertheless, though, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching. Come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. And if you do want to host your own server, Apex Minecraft hosting. The Breakdown.xyz slash Apex is the best way to do it. Anyway, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown, and I'm out. Peace.